Notorious outlaw Richard B. Riddick makes his first appearance in 2000's sci-fi horror Pitch Black. Down at its core, this film is all about survival, as a ship carrying 40 plus passengers crash lands onto a scorched planet, which leaves the survivors stranded and in a race against time. You see, this particular planet that they've crashed on has three suns, meaning darkness only ever covers the surface when the planets align for an eclipse every 22 years. And it just so happens they picked the worst possible time to make their crash landing. You see, they were not the only planet's inhabitants. Alien creatures that dwelled within were ravenous, nocturnal beasts that had a thirst for anything that moved. And since darkness was just around the corner, it meant the survivors were rooted right at the bottom of the food chain. The film works absolute wonders in one aspect, and that is its lighting. It is exceptional. Really, really impressive stuff. The film employs various shades, colours and intensities throughout, in which all of them work wonderfully to get you fully immersed into the planet's environment. Especially in the dark. It really amps up that sense of danger, knowing that these alien creatures could strike at any moment. Now, before the survivors realised the dire situation they were about to be up against, they had far more pressing concerns regarding a certain passenger that also happened to survive the crash. Richard B. Riddick, escaped convict, murderer, as he likes to be known, was on the loose, as Vin Diesel stepped into one of his first starring roles. This film, aside from maybe saving Private Ryan, is the one which truly brought Vin Diesel to the dance. His portrayal here is exactly what you come to expect from him. I mean, he does tend to play quite a gruff stereotype, but this was the first, the most suited, and the most badass in Riddick. Alongside Diesel in the main cast was Rada Mitchell's Carolyn Fry, the elected leader of the group after the captain was killed during the crash. What the crew don't know, though, is that she tried to jettison the cargo and the passenger bay mid-flight, which would have essentially killed everybody. But because of her co-pilot, she was stopped in her tracks. It sort of gives you a more complicated 50-50 view on her. First off, she tried to sacrifice everyone to save her own skin, but now she's at the head of the line when taking dangerous tasks when they needed to be done. Clearly, she was trying to atone for her earlier decision, but it still gives you that neutral feeling about her and Rada Mitchell conveys that conflicting emotion very well. And then we had Johns. Cole Hauser's cocky mercenary was the one that was transporting Riddick across worlds. His dynamic with both Diesel and Mitchell was superb. The manipulation he attempts on both sides of the border only worked in the end to serve his own downfall, but the way he goes about himself and just the general rapport between the leading trio is without a doubt one of the finest aspects about the film. It's not till about an hour though until shit really starts to hit the fan. Once Riddick and the group of survivors realise what they're up against, the stakes for survival are drastically raised. Questions are asked, could this group work together and survive the terrors of the night? Or would Riddick leave everyone behind just like John said he would? One rule. In the, light. the first hour of the film is all about the build-up, and the rest is a non-stop thrill ride until the very end. If you can't tell already, I fucking love this film. It's my favourite in the franchise and my favourite Vin Diesel film overall. And for me, I feel that the film sits somewhere between a 7 and an 8, and after my latest rewatch, it really did impress me again. So I am going to edge it and give it an 8 out of 10. It ticks a heck of a lot of boxes for me, as a science fiction horror film bringing us into a new universe for the very first time, it sets the scene and the tone from the get go to bring us an intense origin story. It really is hard to picture any other actor in the role, when I look at Vin Diesel I see Riddick, and that is a sign that he owns that character. He has a dominating physique 
and his slow delivery of his lines walks that fine line between confidence and arrogance, and Riddick has both of those qualities in abundance. Diesel's starring role here is the one which propelled him to where he is today, and it is the main reason as to why the Riddick franchise still exists to this day. And if I read right at the time, I understand the film didn't particularly have a large budget. Well, whatever the case, what it does with it achieves so many things which even multi-hundred million pound blockbusters can't even do. Its characters are layered, complicated, this universe brims with question after question, and its lighting and shadow effects are used to a standout effect. The trio of leads play off one another exceedingly well, and you never truly know whose side any of them are really on. And add to that, you've got Keith David as the holy man on a pilgrimage with some of his young ones, adds that extra bit of quality to the cast. Some noteworthy scenes to mention are Riddick versus Johns. I mean, we all knew what the outcome was going to be. Riddick was far superior in all departments against Johns, but you've got to give it to the guy for standing toe-to-toe with him, even if it was over pretty quickly. Admittedly, though, his death is a harsh one, and it is a no-brainer, Bad choice of words, the worst death in the film. John said earlier that to die quick would be the way to go, but I don't think he meant quick as in getting his head bitten in half. Yeah, that was nasty. Actually, thinking about it, pretty much the whole part of the film when it's dark has a lot of noteworthy moments. And when it all came to an end with Fry holding a wounded Riddick in her arms, one of them was not making it out. And when all was said and done, Riddick had survived the ordeal, even forming a couple of new friendships along the way. Whether or not he would run into Jack or Imam again would be for another tale. But for now, the universe's most dangerous outlaw was out of his chains, and there would be no telling as to what people would do to try and claim that sizeable bounty. And that just about wraps it up. If you've seen it, what do you think about Pitch Black and were you as impressed as I was with the film? Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. Paris P. Ogilvy. Antiquities dealer. Entrepreneur. Richard B. Riddick. Escaped convict. Murderer.